पी सीरीज और हाइपर हार्मोनिक सीरीज ना इन द कंपेरिजन टेस्ट यूजिंग द लिमिट्स लिमिट एज एन अप्रोच इन्फिनिटी ऑफ यू एन बाई बी एन नेचर ऑफ यू एन इज फाउंड बेस्ड ऑन द नेचर ऑफ वी एन सो हियर वी एन इज कॉल्ड द ऑक्सिलरी सीरीज एंड वुड generally be of 1 by n to the power of p form so let's see uh, the expansion of this would be n to the p n to the power of p 1 by 1 n to the power of p is equal to 1 by 1 to the power of p plus 1 by 2 to the power of p 1 by 3 to the power of p and so on till 1 by n to the power of p and this is called the p series or hyper harmonic series now let's look at the theorem associated with it the p series that is 1 by n to the power of p is convergent if p is greater than 1 and divergent if p is less than or equal to 1 let's look at some examples by just putting some values of p now the first case is p is greater than 1 so let p be equal to 2 and let's see what happens so we get 1 by uh, p so n to the power of 2 or n square this would be equal to 1 by 1 square is 1 plus 1 by 2 square plus 1 by 3 square plus 1 by 4 square and so on up to 1 by n square and we can also write it as 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 9 plus 1 by 16 and so on now let's say p is 1 what happens to 1 by n to the power of p comes n to the power of 1 which is equal to 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by and so on 1 by n Now, if p is less than 1 so let's say so let's say p is minus 2 then this becomes 1 by n to the power of minus 2 which is nothing but uh, n to the power of 2 which is 1 square is 1 2 square is 4 plus 9 plus and so on now let's explore the nature of these series so case by case now when p is greater than 1 p is equal to 1 by 1 to the power of p plus 1 by 2 to the power of p plus 1 by 3 to the power of p 1 by 4 to the power of p plus 1 by 5 to the power of p plus 1 by 6 to the power of p plus 1 by 7 to the power of p and so on now i'll take only the first term so 1 by 1 to the power of p is equal to 1 this is the first term now let's take the next two terms together so 1 by 2 to the power of p plus 1 by 3 to the power of p and let's compare it with 1 by 2 to the power of p plus 1 by 2 to the power of p now is it going to be less than greater than or equal to this 1 by 2 p 1 by 2 p they let's say cancel out so we just have to figure out whether 1 by 3 p is greater than or less than right this is going to be less than 
okay so which means this is 2 by 2p which means 1 by 2 to the power of p minus 1 and remember here we have taken the next two terms now let's take next four terms so 1 by 3p is over so 1 by 4 to the power of p plus 1 by 5 to the power of p plus 1 by 6 to the power of p plus 1 by 7 to the power of p and let's compare it with 4 times 1 by 4 to the power of p so basically we are comparing it with 4 times the first term okay now is this going to be less than or greater than so this is again going to be less than so which means it is going to be less than 1 by 4 to the power of p minus 1 or what I can do is I can write it as 2 to the power of p minus 1 square and just to make sure that it's coming properly let's take the next 8 terms 1 by 8 p okay so this we are going to compare it with what 1 by 8 to the power of p times 8 that is 8 times so which means this is going to be and this is again going to be less than and this can be written as 8 to the power of p minus 1 or we can write it in terms of 2 to the power of p minus 1 cube so which means 1 by n to the power of p in case of p greater than 1 can be written as 1 by 1 to the power of p plus 1 by 2 to the power of p 1 by 3 to the power of p plus 1 by 4 to the power of p and so on and when we do the comparison we know that it's going to be less than or equal to 1 plus 1 by 2 to the power of p minus 1 plus 1 by 2 to the power of p minus 1 square plus 1 by 2 to the power of p minus 1 cube and so on now this is a geometric series with common ratio of 1 by 2 to the power of p minus 1 now this is less than 1 so therefore we have already seen geometric series so we know that because it is less than 1 the geometric series is convergent so by comparison test we can say that 1 by n to the power of p is also convergent if p is greater than 1 okay that is case 1 so let's say case 2 now here uh, let's see what happens if p is equal to 1 so 1 by n to the power of p is equal to 1 by 1 by n to the power of 1 that is 1 by n is equal to 1 plus half plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 plus so on up to 1 by n just like before let's look at first two terms 1 plus half is 1 plus half now 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 and uh, let's compare it with 1 by 4 and 1 plus 1 by 4 now this is going to be equal to 2 times 1 by 4 which is 1 by 2 now here again uh, is it going to be equal to 1 by 4 1 by 4 is let's say cancelled out so the only question we have to answer is is 1 by 3 
small uh, lesser or greater than 1 by 4. So 1 by 3 is 0.33, 1 by 4 is 0.25. So 1 by 3 is greater than 1 by 4. Now let us take 4 terms. So 1 by 5 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 7 plus 1 by 8 and compare it with 1 by 8 times 4. Again, uh, do the comparison and try to figure out whether it is greater or lesser. So this is again be going to be greater. And this is 4 times 2. So 1 by 2. So which means that this series can also be written as okay let me write the original series plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 7 plus 1 by 8 and as we have seen this is going to be greater than or equal to 1 plus half plus half plus half and so on. Now, if we ignore the first term, then this is a geometric series with common ratio of 1. So, therefore, the geometric series is divergent because common ratio is 1. Now, because this G GS is divergent and our series is greater than this GS, that means what? That means that our series 1 by n is also divergent when P is equal to 1. Let us look at the next case. Okay, Now let us see when P is less than 1. And just to get an idea of what the, the, this series would look like, let us uh, uh, say P is equal to half. Remember when it is less than 1, it can be a fraction or it can be a uh, complete number. So let us take uh, a fraction. So 1 by NP is equal to 1 by square root of 1. Remember any number to the power of half is root square root plus 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 3 and so on. Now if let us say p is equal to minus 2 which means what it is less than 1. So in this case it would look like this 1 by 1 to the power of minus 2 plus 1 by 2 to the power of minus 2 plus 1 by 3 to the power of minus 2 and so on. Now since the exponent is negative we can bring it up to the numerator to make it positive. So it will become 1 plus 2 square plus 3 square and so on. So this is how it would look like. Now let us look at, let us compare uh, n to the power of p and n. So let us say this is uh, p is half what we have already explored. So 1 to the power of half and n is 1. Now in this case it is equal. Now let us look at 2 to the power of half. Now is this equal? No. This is square root of 2. So square root of a number is naturally less than the number itself. So square root of 2 would be less than 2. Square root of 3 would be less than 3. So in general we can say n to the power of p is less than or equal to because of this is equal to n. That is when we consider a fraction. Now if we consider uh, a let us say a negative exponent which is not a fraction. So in that case what happens? 
so n to the power of p and m now let us say p is minus 2 so in that case what happens 1 to the power of minus 2 1 2 to the power of minus 2 2 3 to the power of minus 2 3 now here what happens this actually becomes 1 this actually becomes 1 by 4 yes and this becomes 1 by 9 so here also it is here it is equal here it is less here it is less so again this general rule applies to both the situations so which means we can say n to the power of p is less than or equal to n and let's take the reciprocal of both the sides so 1 by n to the power of p is greater than 1 by n this would be applicable for all n belonging to n belonging to the set of natural numbers so which means every term of 1 by n to the power of p is greater than the corresponding term of the series 1 by n and we know that this series 1 by n is a divergent series right so therefore we can say that 1 by n to the power of p is also divergent in this particular case what case when p is less than 1 okay so we have looked at three cases when p is greater than 1 is equal to 1 and less than 1 and of the nature of p series would be convergent in this case divergent in this case and in this case also it will be divergent that means we can club these two into a single condition Okay, that is as far as P series is concerned. But now that we have the knowledge of P series, let's revisit the limit form of comparison test. Remember, limit form of comparison test. What does it say? Limit as n approaches infinity of un by vn. There we were talking in terms of the limit not being equal to 0 yes but now we are going to look at what happens when it is actually zero un series and en series are two series of positive terms see here we have looked at not equal to zero so based on that we had looked at the test but now we are saying if it is zero and vn which is our auxiliary series is convergent then we can say that un series is also convergent okay let's see whether we can prove it or not remember by definition we can say un by vn minus 0 is less than epsilon for all n uh, greater than m remember the definition says there exists a number m such that this condition is satisfied now this can be written as what minus epsilon less than u n by v n less than epsilon for all n greater than m now we are not really interested in both the conditions let's focus on u n by v n is less than epsilon for all n greater than m so which means this can be written as un is less than epsilon times vn for all n greater than m now remember un every term of the un is less than the each term of vn so since vn is convergent therefore we can say that 
un series is also convergent okay now let's look at another aspect of this again limit has n approaches infinity of un by vn equal to 0 and the series vn is divergent okay then un need not be divergent yes in the previous case if vn is convergent then this will also be convergent but in this case if vn is divergent it need it doesn't mean that un is also um, we can prove this by using an example so somebody says uh, uh, in this car park there is only red cars now how do you disprove it you don't have to go to every car right you just have to show one particular car which is not red to make the statement false so something similar to that we are going to do here so let us say series un is equal to 1 by n square so here p is equal to 2 we are taking and vn is 1 by n now un by bn will be 1 by n square by 1 by n which is equal to n by n square which will be 1 by n now let's take the limit limit as n approaches infinity of un by vn is equal to limit as n approaches infinity of 1 by n this is equal to 0 now understand this very carefully yes here 1 by n square is nothing but the p series of this form right where p is greater than 1 so if p is greater than 1 it means what it is convergent right we have already proved this previously and 1 by n is nothing but 1 by n to the power of p where p is equal to 1 and this we have already proved that this is divergent so vn series is remember this is vn and this is un so vn is divergent but un is not divergent so that's why this says that it need not be divergent okay so be clear about this because as you start looking at series more and more uh, the, this will become very very important now the steps involved in figuring out the series convergence so first step is figure out the general term of un and then figure out the auxiliary series in the form of general term now you have to figure out this auxiliary series in such a way so that whose nature you are familiar with or know so and also the limit as n approaches infinity of un by vn is equal to l and l is not equal to 0 because if it is l equal to 0 then you have to be careful of these two uh, situations okay i think that's enough for today bye for now